In this video, we're learning about active transport. So we'll cover what active transport is, how active transport works, and finally, what bulk transport is. Let's begin with what active transport is. Active transport is the process where particles move from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration, which means they're moving up or against their concentration gradient. So in this image, they'd move from this area where the concentration is lower, then through the membrane to this area where the concentration is higher. This is basically the opposite of diffusion, where particles move from high to low concentration. Because active transport works against the natural flow, we describe it as an active process, meaning it requires an input of energy which comes from ATP, a molecule that's produced during respiration. Now, the phospholipid bilayer that makes up the biggest part of cell membranes have proteins like this carrier protein embedded in them. And it's these proteins that typically move specific particles across membranes during active transport. Overall, there are three main factors that affect the rate of active transport. First, the rate of respiration is important because more respiration means more ATP is available and this increases the active transport rate. Second, the number of carrier proteins is crucial because more proteins means more particles can be transported at once and this also increases the active transport rate. Then finally, temperature plays a role because higher temperatures increase the kinetic energy of particles, making them move faster, and this further increases the active transport rate. There's a bit of a catch here though, because if the temperature gets too high, it causes lots of proteins to denature, including the carrier proteins and the enzymes involved in respiration, and this has the effect of decreasing the active transport rate. Next, Let's explore how active transport works when it's transporting simple molecules and ions by breaking it down into six key stages. Let's say that we've got an ion that needs to be moved across a cell membrane, but because it would be moving against its concentration gradient, it needs to move by active transport. To do this, first, the ion binds to a specific carrier protein on the side of the membrane where it's at a lower concentration. Then, a molecule of ATP binds to the carrier protein and this ATP is broken down into ADP and an inorganic phosphate, often represented as PI, in a process known as hydrolysis. This hydrolysis reaction releases energy which causes the carrier protein to change shape. The ions then released from the carrier protein on the opposite side of the membrane where its concentration is higher. Once the ions released, the phosphate group detaches and the carrier protein returns to its original shape, ready to transport another ion. Finally, let's take a look at what bulk transport is. Bulk transport is a type of active transport used to move a lot of molecules or large substances into or out of our cells all at once. Some examples of things moved by bulk transport are enzymes, hormones, and sometimes even entire cells like bacterial cells that need breaking down. So now let's grab a cell diagram and look at the two main types of bulk transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. If we start with endocytosis, this is how large substances, or lots of substances, are transported into cells by active transport. As an example, let's say the cell needs to take in a lot of these orange particles for well, first, the cell membrane engulfs the material, which then forms a vesicle that brings the material into the cytoplasm where it can be used. This process includes both phagocytosis, which is the uptake of solids like entire cells, and also pinocytosis, which is the uptake of liquids, so that would be things like molecules that are in solution. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is how large substances or lots of substances are transported out of cells by active transport. During this process, a vesicle, which is often made by the Golgi apparatus, carries the material to the cell membrane. The vesicle then fuses with the membrane and releases the material outside the cell. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. 
You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.